Rising high above the Serengeti, Mount Kilimanjaro stands as the roof of Africa. Many people attempt to conquer the mountain, and in turn get conquered themselves. This is the story of how I touched the African sky. The beginning of my journey up Kilimanjaro began with meeting the people I would be travelling across Africa with. I arrived in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. There to visit us on arrival were members of Kenya's Maasai people. And then we were off into Africa. We visited a Maasai village in order to gain an understanding of those who lived in the shadow of the mountain. As we moved through Kenya to Tanzania, the colours of the Maasai were visible everywhere. Seeing is believing, and when I saw Kilimanjaro looming in the distance, I knew I was in for a challenge unlike I had ever faced. Crowned with glaciers, Kilimanjaro dominated the surrounding landscape. My group prepared for our next week to be owned by Mount Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro's jungle looked as ancient as the mountain. After a day's hiking, the first night was spent at an altitude higher than Australia's highest mountain. The trek upwards continued. After a long day, my group reached our second camp. Rombo. The physical strain of the hike was exerting itself on some of the group, yet we continued forward, higher on the mountain. The environment changed around us. We had traversed a forest, a temperate meadow, and now we stood in a cold, misty desert. After reaching the last hut, we had very little sleep before we were awakened for the final leg of the journey. For seven hours we marched upwards, in the cold and the dark. At 5.30 in the morning we reached Kilimanjaro's ancient crater, and we watched sunrise over the Serengeti. Those who could continue to the ultimate peak of Kilimanjaro went on, walking among the ancient trains of ice. And then I had made it. I stood on the highest point in Africa, and one of the highest places in the world. We rejoiced in the climb down the mountain. and then said farewell to Africa.